This video will focus on potential dangers related to the use of chemicals. Workers at a nursery or greenhouse may be required to dispense various chemicals, such as pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides. Let's review techniques of proper chemical use and steps you can take to ensure safe application of chemicals you are required to dispense. It is important to note that this training is intended as a refresher or supplemental training and does not replace formal pesticide applicator training. Chemicals should be stored in a safe, secure, and well-identified place. They should be stored in properly labeled containers with the label clearly visible. Never store chemicals in old containers where it is unclear what chemical is actually in the container. Storage containers should be tightly sealed. Check the containers regularly to make sure they have no leaks, breaks, or tears. The building, room, or structure where chemicals are stored should be clearly marked with appropriate warning signs and should provide some level of protection from freezing temperatures or extreme heat. There's one fact regarding chemical safety that must be known. The label is the law and it must be followed. Labels explain how to safely apply chemical products. Before applying chemicals, make sure you have read the label. The chemical formulation, signal word, precautionary statements, personal protective equipment requirements, application method, and the projected length of exposure are indicated on the label. By reading and understanding the label, these products can be mixed, applied, stored, and disposed of safely and correctly. The label will list information related to the chemical formulation of the product. The common brand name, chemical name, manufacturer, and ingredients are all listed on the label. A signal word will be listed on the label. This is one word that can help identify the toxicity of the chemical. The signal words that are used on product labels are danger, highly toxic, warning, moderately toxic, caution, low toxic. No signal word indicates a relatively non-toxic chemical. Precautionary statements will include items such as why the chemical is dangerous, adverse effects, the level of personal protective equipment required, and disposal directions. You may also find a re-entry statement. This defines the time that must pass before a person can enter an area treated with a particular chemical. Generally, all the information you need to stay safe when working with chemicals can be found on the product label. Additional information about the specific chemicals used in these products can be found on the Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. If you don't know where to find the MSDS for the chemical product you use, ask your supervisor. Before you mix any chemical, read the product label. You should be sure to wear all personal protective equipment required on the label. Make sure that items such as gloves or goggles are not damaged. When working with chemicals, you are at most risk when mixing and pouring. Remember, at this point, they are in a concentrated state. Be sure to only use the amount of chemical specified on the label. In most cases, more is not better. Chemicals should be mixed in an area with good light and ventilation. When possible, stand upwind to minimize exposure. Check your equipment for leaks. Look for loose fittings, hoses, and nozzles. Any leak should be repaired or reported to your supervisor. If required, place warning labels or signs in the areas to let others know that chemicals are being applied. Check the weather conditions before applying chemicals. Never apply a chemical if the wind will cause the product to drift out of the area to be treated. Food can absorb film or residue that could make you sick, so do not eat or drink while working with chemicals. There are four ways that chemicals can enter the body, through the skin, the mouth, the eyes, and the nose. Personal protective equipment, such as coveralls, boots, aprons, gloves, respirators, and goggles protect you from exposure to these chemicals. Make sure to wear your personal protective equipment at all times when working with chemicals. Most cases of chemical poisoning come from absorption through the skin. Exposure to the skin can happen when you aren't even applying pesticides. Be careful when cleaning out clogged nozzles. If a chemical enters your mouth, it can cause serious illness or even death. That is why it's important to keep chemicals in properly labeled containers and never put them into a used bottle or food container. 
Also, you should be sure not to eat or drink after working with chemicals until you have left the sprayed area and washed yourself thoroughly with soap and water. Our eyes are especially vulnerable to chemical damage. When specified on the product label, wear your eye protection at all times when working with pesticides. When applying certain chemicals, you may be required to use a respirator. The most important thing to remember is selection of the proper respirator for the application. If you are using a chemical that is labeled as an irritant to your eyes, nose, or throat, you should use a full face respirator. If an air purifying respirator is required, the filter or cartridge must be approved by NIOSH MSHA for use with the chemical you are applying. Be sure to read the product label for directions on which type of respirator to use. This is critical. Use of the wrong type of respirator can be the same as having no protection at all. To better ensure that your respirator is working properly, you should clean your respirator regularly. After cleaning, give the unit a thorough inspection. Look for any damaged or worn areas that may cause failure. A damaged respirator should not be used and should be reported to your supervisor. All respirators should be inspected before each use to ensure cleanliness and that all components are present and in good working condition. Proper storage of your respirator can prolong its life and usefulness. Be sure to protect it from excessive exposure to dust, sunlight, excessive moisture, or extreme temperatures. Most of the time, the best choice is a resealable plastic bag or container with a tight-fitting lid. When using a respirator, remember that breathing may require more effort than normal breathing. Only a snug fit protects you, so make sure that you have the right size respirator for your face. Your supervisor will provide a size that best fits your face. When properly fitted, air should not leak around the sides or edges. The product label will tell you what to do in case of accidental exposure. The key thing to remember is timing. It is critical that exposure be dealt with immediately. Contaminated clothing should be removed immediately. If required to wash a contaminated area with water, whether skin or your eyes, make sure to do so for the recommended time. The longer a pesticide remains on your skin or in your eyes, or the longer you inhale it, the greater the damage that is likely to occur. Also, make sure to report any spills or accidental exposure to your supervisor. To review, store chemicals in a safe, secure, well-defined space away from freezing temperatures or extreme heat. Make sure all containers can be tightly sealed and clearly labeled. Never store chemicals in old containers where it is unclear what chemical is actually in the container. Never store chemicals in containers that could easily be mistaken as food containers for people or animals. Always wear proper personal protection equipment. Make sure this equipment fits and works correctly. The label is the law. Read the directions and always follow them. Always mix and apply chemicals according to label directions. Harmful chemicals can enter your body through your skin, mouth, eyes, and nose. Wear the proper equipment and follow the proper procedures to minimize your risk of exposure. Following these guidelines can help keep you safe from harmful exposure to agricultural chemicals.